So on YouTube, you can find any number of videos expertly detailing how to pillar bed and glass bed your rifle stock. As far as I know, this is the only video showing you how not to. I'm going to start out by showing you representative samples of the accuracy of the gun before and then after the pillar and glass bedding process. And then I'm going to describe uh, the things that I think I did wrong and then what effects these errors had on the accuracy of the gun. So here you have the groups fired from the unbedded stock. Um, you'll see that they're all pretty solid um, and ultimately they yielded an average group size of 1.22 inches. And then I shot these groups after I had glass bedded and pillar bedded the gun um, and ended up with an average group size of just shy of two inches. And then I decided to try some Federal Premium 200 grain Edge TLR, which is a high-end hunting ammo, and this happened. So here's group one. Not half bad, you know, I mean an inch or so, maybe, maybe slightly more. Here's group two, uh, opening up a little bit, obviously. These were the first two, and then this was the third. Maybe a flyer, uh, didn't feel like it though. Here's where it gets dicey. Here's group three. One, two, three. That is a lot. I'm gonna have to measure my, you know, hand spread there. Group four, one, Two, who knows what the last one is. Maybe it's one of those. So what I think were the two main errors in my pillar bedding and glass bedding process were first that I drilled out the stock way too wide to accept the pillars. And then secondly, I tightened the pillars down too tight to the action when they were setting the stock. So to describe that first issue a little more, uh, Picture's worth a thousand words, as they say. So here you can see how uh, how wide I drilled things out. And actually, this was the better of the two. Uh, I started with this one and then went, went to a, a narrower diameter bit. Um, this one up here was just a complete disaster. Um, you know, and uh, I just assumed that by really slathering epoxy in there, I could make up for the sins of having uh, drilled too wide. But I think at the end of the day, you know, the epoxy is just that. It's meant to have the pillars stick in there. It's not actually meant to structurally be the thing that keeps them in place. Um, that's supposed to be the laminate of the stock itself, of course. And then my second issue was torquing the pillars down too tight as they were setting in the stock. Um, I had my reasons for doing this, and if you really want to know, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, but I torqued them down pretty tight. And because uh, they were imperfectly uh, mated with the surface of the action, as I torqued them down, they actually both canted a little bit. And uh, what this did was it actually uh, rotated the receiver uh, in the entire stock. Um, my barrel was still, was still perfectly positioned down the center of the stock because I had uh, taped around it. Um, but like I said, the action was just ever so slightly, uh, you know, levered to uh, you know in a counterclockwise direction and to show you what I think that did you can see that spot there that spot there and then there's a few spots also uh, up here um, right after I bedded the stock those spots weren't there it was only after I started shooting the gun that those spots appeared and so it became clear to me that my action was rubbing against the stock obviously uh, you know, if you have, uh, you know, kind of pressure points, high spots on the stock that are rubbing against your action, it's going to lead to, uh, you know, a decrease in accuracy. So as you can tell, I very conservatively uh, glass bed the stock. Uh, it was just here and here. I, I didn't feel like any of this was necessary because of how little material there was in here. And if my gun had been properly positioned in the stock, maybe this would have been enough. But the fact of the matter is um, I needed to either not, uh, you know, cantilever my... <laughs> Uh, pillars or I should have bedded the entire thing uh, so that the, the receiver and the stock were perfectly mated um, instead of having these high pressure points here. And here's where things get pretty speculative but uh, my guess is that um, that rotation of the action in the stock uh, which was then contacting those high points in the stock um, was creating just kind of that general lack of accuracy that you saw um, in that first series of core lock groups. Um, and then the, uh, the fact that I, 
you know, uh, drill out the pillars or an area for the pillars way too wide, I think is what led to that second sort of sudden catastrophic inaccuracy. I suspect that there were air bubbles or something in there because it was very, very difficult to uniformly spread the, you know, the bedding material in there, or the, excuse me, the epoxy in there. Um, and I suspect there were some air bubbles in there that after, you know, you know, suffering heavy recoil from the 300 wind mag, uh, just kind of cracked, broke, shifted, whatever, and that's when you saw those wild, you know, multi-page uh, groups there. And so I have here a $180 paperweight. Um, I've completely ruined the stock, but I'm going to get a new one and try it again. Um, hopefully I've learned from my mistakes, and I hope you have as well.